This is by far one of the more unique shoes that I've ever worn or tested, but it's for sure the most breathable hiking shoe that I've ever worn. And this thing is chuck full of features on their website, like re rechargeable midsole, reverse mullet mesh, biodynamic fit, direct connect, balanced geometry, and it has all these weird things like the little thing on the outsole here. It's got mesh on one side, then this on the other side. So we're gonna cut this thing in half, run it through our test. First of all, figure out what is the shoe? What is it intended for? What are all of those features that they say, like the mullet mesh? Is it worth the money? And has Astral made something game changing? Or is this like we've seen from a lot of the other more barefoot wide toe box kind of brands that sell something for a high price made from low quality materials to sell to people that don't know any better under the guise of eco-friendly initiatives when in all reality, it's just cheap garbage. That's what I wanna figure out with this shoe. So who is Astral? Well, they say they're a team of wilderness athletes, artists, and craftspeople dedicated to finding unique and necessary ways of living better through nature. In 1999, Philip Curry, Astral founder and CEO, sold his first business to Patagonia and used that money to travel and became a biodynamic farmer, which a biodynamic farmer employs a holistic approach to agriculture, viewing the farm as a self-contained living organism. They integrate soil, plants, and animals and humans into a single interconnected system. Then after starting that farm in 2002, Astral began on a biodynamic farm outside of Asheville, North Carolina in the headwaters of the Rocky Broad River. And Astral introduces four life jackets made of PVC alternatives, recycled polypropylene, phthalate-free NBR, and air and organic kapot. Then in 2008, Astral discontinues their use of highly toxic chloropene, aka neoprene, and Astro introduces Airscape as a pattern for the world's first breathable life jacket. Then in 2009, the founder moved to Southeast Asia to live next to the factories that built their products to learn how shoes were made. And in 2012, Astro introduces four ultra premium shoes named for the working class of porters, bakers, brewers, and wrestlers. And they saw fairly immediate success, especially with the kayakers and rafters, where the brewer wins Outdoor Magazine's Gear of the Year award. Then again in 2018, the Astro Loek is awarded Best Water Shoe of the Year by Outdoor Magazine. And then one more time in 2025, Astro introduces the Nosebo, the world's first rechargeable through hiking shoe, and Outside Magazine names it as their best overall summer hiking shoe. So they started off with a different company that they sold to a bigger company, then to farming, then to life jackets, then to rafting, and then ended up making some award-winning shoes. And so this is another one of these stories where instead of coming from the footwear world and then trying to make footwear, Astral came from a different industry and then took all that they learned and all the advantages and the unique angles they learned from a different industry and applied it to the footwear industry. And it clearly worked. They won like three or four awards. But that doesn't always mean that they're, it's a high quality product. You know, sometimes it's just branding, sometimes it's just marketing. So what is this shoe? Well, the brand is Astral, the style is a tech yak. They weigh a very light 10 ounces. They retail for $149. They're made in China and the way they position this product is rechargeable, minimalist trail performance. Tech Yak blends comfort and durability into a naturally shaped minimalist trail shoe. Add in legendary grip, turbo ventilation, and recycled materials and you are now free to flow through nature no matter what outdoor activity you choose. And if you do want a pair of these, check them out via links in my description. So now let's start looking at the materials because right off the bat, there's not a single shred of leather on this at all which is usually how it goes with the more like outdoorsy, eco-friendly brands. They just don't like leather. I get it, but I think there's an argument to be made. There's less of an environmental impact by using a more durable material, but some people just don't want to wear dead animals around their feet, which I totally get. So what is it? Well, it's a 100% recycled RPET 3D mesh upper. So I think this is what they mean by reverse mullet mesh. They don't really describe it on their website. What the idea is, is they've got a really open mesh with a fine mesh backing it, and then it's a spacer mesh where there's little fibers in between that give it a little bit of separation. And that's why these things are so freaking breathable. They, it almost feels like you're wearing sandals when you're wearing these. We did the breathability test just to show you the difference between this and a regular shoe. It also has a more abrasion resistant canvas that wraps around the majority of the shoe. And this fake leather is about 1.3 millimeters thick and we burned it and it just, you know, it's clearly fake leather, it shriveled up and burned and turned into a black tar. Some people think that's more environmentally friendly to each their own. But the thing I like about this material is they've used it in a really smart way because they have it in the obvious high wear spot of the toe bumper that wraps around the big toe so that you don't get that big toe lift and wear through the, the actual, like this thinner mesh. And then instead of having mesh on the medial side or the in inside, they have another layer of this abrasion resistant fake leather. And then through the heel, they've got a piece of rubber. 
And so I like the asymmetry of it, and I like that it's function-based. I just don't like that it's not leather. We also ran the puncture test on it, and it only took 34 pounds to puncture through. So overall, even though it doesn't have leather on it, I really like this upper for its intended purpose. It's not gonna be the most durable upper, but it is crazy breathable, and this shoe is gonna perform really well in wet conditions. And so it kind of has the same approach as jungle boots, where instead of doing a waterproof lining and doing everything you can to keep the water out of your shoes, the whole idea with the air and water is easy in, easy out. To me, this is kind of like an adventure sandal, but made to be a shoe. And it's gonna be more protective and more supportive. If you look at the inside, it backs up that idea because there's really very minimal lining on the inside. It just wraps around the heel to give you a little bit of comfort, but through the forefoot, there doesn't look like there's much in there. It's mostly just that spacer mesh. And then you've got a little bit of a backer on this fake leather, but there's really no dedicated lining throughout the majority of the shoe. And so that's a huge part of why these are so ridiculously breathable. But the interesting thing about the inside to me is they call this their rechargeable EVA drop-in midsole. It's definitely an insole and midsole combination so it's, it's just like replacing your insole they just call it a midsole because it basically acts as a midsole because underneath of that there's really nothing under there you're mostly just standing on the outsole with that thin piece of lining material just so you're not standing but now that we have this midsole out you can see what they mean by a biodynamic shape basically an anatomical foot shape you know I actually just happen to have a pair of Keens here one of the more popular naturally wide toe boxes. Let's see how it compares and it is almost identical it's actually just a little bit wider than even Keens but they're not quite as wide as your ultra wide stuff like Texarado boots or splay shoes. It's a nice middle ground, more like a Birkenstock Keens shape. And it even looks pretty good on foot. It definitely is wide, there's no mistaking it but I like how straight this big toe is. And so they are right about biodynamic shape. I just have never heard it described as a biodynamic shape. And the durometer of this midsole is around the mid 30s, so about what you'd expect from a midsole. We did the ball drop test on it, bounced up 16 and a half inches, so super responsive. And they say it's zero drop. It seems like it's the same thickness of the heel and the toe, but it definitely has some arch support. It has these wings coming up to cradle your foot. And then to one of the obvious unique things about this is the outsole, which includes this sidewall up here, because this is technically a cup sole. The way they describe this is with the direct connect. What they mean by direct connect, it has to be the sidewall stitch. So it's a cup sole, the sidewall stitch, but it waves up and down. So you've got some support on the sides of your feet, I think is the intention. And then it drops lower. So you have a natural flex point. So you don't have that thing that happens to like every pair of Converse where it's, it like pops out right where this flex point is. Then it goes high again for abrasion resistance and then it drops down where you need to have flex. I like it. You know, it's, like, it's basically like intentionally built sneaker cup sole positioned towards hiking and being lightweight and really, really flat while still having a decent amount of lugs. It's definitely not the most rigid and durable thing, but these are centered around a little bit more towards that barefoot style, the zero drop. And the guys that like that kind of stuff like having nothing underneath their foot. And we did the bar drop test only bounced up two inches. And I think that's mostly because it just doesn't have enough foam to bounce it back up. And even the puncture test, only punctured through at 70 pounds. So not the most durable construction, not the most durable shoes. It goes hand in hand with being lightweight and breathable and especially eco-friendly. So now let's cut this thing in half, see what's all on the inside, see if there's anything hidden on there. Maybe there's a piece of leather somewhere on the inside. And I'm curious if any of these stitches are fake or if there's, what does this little ball do? Let's cut them in half and find out. Okay, we got it cut in half. And if you want to support us and being able to afford to cut all this stuff and tell you the stories of the brands and what, whether you should buy it or not, and actually know what you're spending your hard-earned money on, you can subscribe, you can give us a like, you can check out our handmade leather goods that me and my team make in-house that I designed all of our products and our collaboration where we work with some of the coolest and top brands in the world to make really ridiculous stuff like the seven layer beefy Russell Mock. So now let's see what's inside. So even thinner than I thought, but at the same time, there is technically kind of like a little midsole in there. Underneath this lasting fabric is a little bit of a layer of, looks like a foam. So you, you could point out the fact, it's like this is not necessarily rechargeable midsole, it's more rechargeable insole, but I get what they're going for. And it's flat enough, 
compared to any other shoe that, you know, it makes sense that they're calling it a midsole because it's literally thicker than everything else underneath your foot. So for overall stack height, you know, you're somewhere around five eighths of an inch. Here's your official numbers. And as for a counter material, just a typical counter. And now you can really see that sidewall stitch sewing all that together. And you really can especially see how, how little materials between your foot and the outside world, similar to a sandal, but giving you just a little bit more protection. So then what do I like about this shoe? Well, I do like the rechargeable midsole. I like the jungle boot kind of concept of being a water ready, easy in, easy out. They're definitely the most breathable shoes I've ever worn, for, especially for hiking. And ultimately, to me, this solves that problem of needing a pair of sandals, especially like adventure sandals, but refusing to wear them like I do. Because it does everything a sandal does. It's breathable, it's fast drying, it's lightweight, it's wide, it's really flat, you can feel the ground underneath your foot. But at the same time, you also get toe protection, you get more grip, you get more stability, your foot's not slipping off the side, and it's clearly outdoor style. I think it works. It's, it's wacky and over the top enough that I like it. And what does this little red thing do? Nothing, I think it's just for, I think it's just detail. But then what are my dislikes about this? Well, I just wish it had leather. Because to me, that leather would really emphasize the durability of this and really protect this mesh without worrying about this thinner, less durable fake leather. So then is it worth the price? It's 150 bucks. It's very thin, it's very light, it's very like minimal. And we've just seen the trend for all these shoes that are synthetic based, they're more barefoot, this kind of style you pay a lot for not a lot. And this shoe's no exception. You're paying a premium because it's a small brand. You're paying a premium because of the unique designs and the custom molds they have to do and all the different materials. And so I do think it's pretty expensive for what you get, but I don't think you can get anything like this from anyone else while still maintaining the wide toe box, the really breathable upper, all these little features you can't really get anywhere else that I've seen. So there might be some shoes out there that are maybe 30 to 50 bucks cheaper that do a similar thing, but I just haven't seen a brand that really came from a completely different industry with kayaking and boating and life jackets and infused a shoe with all the education and information and expertise from a different industry making a really unique shoe that solves a unique problem. And so for that, I like it. But let me know what you think. Do you think they're worth the price? Is there a better shoe out there that does it better for cheaper? And if you've had a pair of these, let me know your experience in them. What was good, what was bad, and what would you change about these to make them better? Because I think they're onto something. I just like it when any brand pushes the limits, does really crazy stuff and really making unique things, taking a gamble on unique concepts. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. See ya.